It is an awesome time. We, we want to honor our pastors, um, Ken and, and Pastor Mary. Um, thank the Lord for, for that life. And, and so we're so excited for them. Amen. Let's give our pastors a, a round of applause. Amen. And so listen, we, we're going to be, um, a, 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 may, you may be challenged, but that's okay. We all like to be challenged. Amen. And so we're going to continue where we kind of left off at last week about, you know, we're in a series of we love our church and, and I love our church. And, and so uh, we talked about last week the power of connection. And so we're going to uh, review uh, three little points and then we're going to move forward to the teaching on this morning, uh, which is connected to accelerate. I don't know anybody that wants to just walk through life, but I want to speed through life. I want some things that has happened in my life that is coming towards me so fast. It's goodness, God's grace, God's favor is happening in my life where it's almost like Amos, right? Where they were trying to pick up, uh, you know, so much harvest time, and then it was time to plant again. And so it's the same type of thing that's going to happen in your life when you're properly connected. And, and so we're gonna see that on this morning. And so we thank the Lord uh, for being here, the Holy Spirit being here. Uh, and uh, we thank him uh, for what he's gonna say on, on this morning. Uh, but three points that, I, that we kind of ministered on last week, one of them is that being connected or having to be connected or you being connected, it takes an all in mindset. It, it's not something that you can say, well, I'm connected, and then I disconnect, I, I, I reconnect, and I, I, I attach, and there's a difference between uh, being connected and attached. And so it takes this all in mentality. Uh, you know, it's, it's almost like having a job where you are, uh, you're there, right? And, and so we don't want you to be, you know, job hopping. If your resume got eight jobs in one year, the next person may be like, are oh, they really committed? Or, or there's 18 different careers that you may have. There's nothing wrong with looking for purpose, but there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's something to be said when you're connected, yeah. right? We, and so we, we, we understand that. Uh, and we, we mentioned last week that growing people is the most important uh, aspect of ministry. But in, in order for you to grow, you have to be connected. Because, yeah. you know, it's one thing about, because when you're growing, that means you're there. In your attendance, yeah. in your thought life, in your mind, in your passions, in your giftings, you're connected, and so you're consistent. Yeah. Yeah. You, can, you know, anything in life where you turn it on and turn it off, that's inconsistent. When you go through a season of being committed and, and then a bunch of seasons of, of not being committed and a bunch of seasons of being connected and taking two steps forward and two steps back, that's not really progression. But I'm talking about having this spirit where you can grow. It's, it's something about as you kind of stay focused in an area. Um, there's a saying that says that what you focus on the most, you want to maximize. You know, if you, if you think about this, if your child is, is undisciplined in a certain area and, and you, you identify that trait and, and you speak to them and you kind of play, place them in position to, to get better and to become more, uh, you're focusing on clean your room. 
oh, it wasn't done right. Cl clean your room. Uh, anybody ever been like that where you focus on one thing? You, you see an area of maybe your child that is not where you want it to be, so you, you constantly work on them in their time management or cleaning their room or taking the trash out properly or, or whatever in life you're, you're watching them from that. And then we mentioned about in, in 1 Thessalonians, um, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4, Peter, I'm sorry, Paul mentioned the church or the people of God. They were so faithful. They were so committed in who they were that he started boasting and bragging about them. They were so connected. And they had experienced so much persecutions and hardships and disappointments and setbacks that could have came towards them, but none of that detached them from each other. The hardships, the disappointments, the crying, the, the why this has happened. He, he, he was so captivated by their connection of staying together that he said, I'm going to tell everybody else about these people. There's something about them that I, I need you to see in, in your life. I thought that was so powerful that, you know, we all go through things. I don't know if you know that, but everybody goes through something. That's why, that's why when you finish telling them your problem, they say, well, when it's my turn. When you finish, let me go ahead and give you my story. Can I, can I sit on your couch? You know, can I get coached? So it's the, it, that's what happens because, um, you know, we all go through something. Nobody is exempt from it. But, but the, the persecutions that, that happened, I love the fact that they didn't get disconnected. I, I thought that was so awesome to, to have somebody have such a resolve in their life that they did not disconnect from their purpose. Being together edifying one another, being encouraged. We're talking about we love our church. About they were loving who they were together. And then we, we mentioned lastly that love is the ultimate connector. When your heart is there, when you have the spirit of love, because God is love. He loved you so much that he gave his best gift, his son. Before you, we deserve it, before you said, I, I'm good enough, before you thought you can earn it, he said, I'm, I love you so much, I'm so good, I'm going to give you my best gift from the start. And so love is something that, is, uh, uh, something that we should exhibit one to the other. And so we're going to talk about this connection or connecting to uh, accelerate. Uh, and so this challenge that we're going to have this morning I have three questions from you, for you. Three questions that we're going to answer on this morning. One, how am I connecting to God through my church? What? Yeah. How do I connect to God through my church? How do I connect to God through my pastor? And how do I connect to God through the vision of the house. Those are three questions that we're going to answer on this morning and that you should think about as we talk about being connected to Accelerate. And so it's, it's, it's going to be something that we, um, we know that it may be um, hard to hear, but I, I believe that God is, um, he is a, he's a good God and he wants us to get better. He wants us to go forward. And so we, we want to take our religious mindset off we want, we want to bind the spirit of familiarity. You know, we, want to, we want to look at this from a from fresh perspective. And so I want you to turn to um, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. And we're going to read this out of the, the Passion Translation. The first question is, how am I? That means that you, you're assessing some things. How am I connecting to God? through my church. We're in a series of I Love My Church. So how am I connecting to God through my church? And some of us may not even think that we can connect to God through our church or how is that important. And we're going to see that in, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and 38, and it said, Jesus answered him. This was 
a, a, someone was challenging him, uh, a Pharisee was challenging him on the law. He said, Jesus answered him, love the Lord your God with every passion of your heart. That's one thing. With all the energy of your being. Second thing. And with every thought that is within you, this is the great and supreme commandment. Bring your passion, bring your energy, and, and bring every thought of how you view God, how you connect to Him. Now, many of us may say, well, I, I love the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. And we relegated it to just our relationship with God in, in our home life, I should say. And that is very important, to live for God at home, outside of the church, at work, in your neighborhood, displaying who God is in your life. How are we supposed to attract others if we're not living out loud for Christ? I say live out loud. You know, we, you know I, I don't like solid Christians. I don't like people that, that love the Lord in church. See, this lifestyle that we're talking about is everything that's in you. The whole you. The real you. I'm talking about living from that place. Living from that place because it's going to impact everything else. Yeah. When, you know, when, you, when you're real with yourself to say, how do I, do I trust God? Do, do I love him? Do, do I showcase his long suffering? Do I showcase his goodness and his love to others? Is, is, how, how do I emulate who God is in my life if I only do it in church? And if, if, I, if I'm only doing it in the church, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. But at the same time, I want you to look at this from a different perspective. Yes, I want to love God with all my passion and, and all my energy and with my thought life outside. But I want you to think about loving God that way in the house, in the church. Think about that. Think about how we can show forth God's love, or I can show forth my love for God at my church. You may say, well, why is that important? Well, thank you. We're going to see that in a few minutes. See, it's important enough for you to realize that, that how I show forth some things in the church. This passion that I have. See, you can see passion. Can you not? You can see this desire. It's, it's March Madness right now. These guys are excited about playing and winning and go to our hills. But anyway, you know, when they, they, when, they, when they won and as the game is going and the intensity is heated up, their desire and their focus and their passion, they were so excited. And then they won the game. You know, we are so passionate, and we, are so, we have so much passion and desire at the games. Not knocking it. At the crawfish ball, prime time. <clears throat> oh, my bad. I'm trying to figure out why the whole church wasn't invited. Next level knee crawfish too, right? Does anybody at Next Level eat crawfish? Pursue the crawfish? A -a amen, Pastor. Amen, amen. I guess that's favoritism in the church. But anyway, let me, let me read my notes right here. But it's about showing this passion and this energy at church. Not, 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 not sour mouth. Not sour mouth. Can't tell me hello, how you doing? Can't say, get them out a compliment. It's about this, it's about this, it, you know, the mask, you know, is off now. It, you know, there's some people with the mask on, but there's something about showing forth this desire, this intensity at church. 
I'm so excited. My hands are lifted. I, I'm praising him just because of who he is and talking about dwelling here and okay, wait, Lord, dwell here. And I'm so excited. I love you so much, but I, I can't even humble myself to lift my hands. Oh, Lord. I'm just, I'm just trying to find security right now and make sure they're in the front row. I'm not even, I'm I'm so into myself that you're not all that. You're not. So I'm going to challenge us how we show up to the house of God. We love our church and we, we love God, but we, 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 we okay with the half mask. I'm, 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 I'm so prideful, I can't even lift my hands and tell the Lord, thank him for who he's been in my life. But it's, it's this kind of mindset, this desire, but we have no problem rooting for our team. I, I say root for the Cowboys. I say root for the Saints. Root. We have no problem. And it, 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 we have no problem at all, except at church. It's desire that has to kindle something in the side of you because, you know, God, God does so much to save you from that accident. See, you know, you, you, you go to your cabinet, there's food in the cabinet. I don't see nobody, I don't see no bones on anybody. I see, you know, flesh and meat and muscles and you're eating. Gas may be high, but you still got gas in the tank. It's, it's this kind of mindset that we gotta, you know, I'm talking about destroy, cast down, break up that I can't even show for it passion. Think about that. God said, show me some passion. Passion looks a certain way. When I, when I think of passion, I think of my friend right there with the pink hair. Yeah, I'm calling you out. Passion. She passionate about her looks. She passionate about, how I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna live out loud, I'm good. It, it's something about, it's on display, the passion that we have. Do you have the passion? I'm not talking about do you, 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 okay, Lord, I love you. I can't, I'm a man, but I I can't even praise you. What? Yeah, the devil is alive. I don't care if you're a man. We should be leading in our worship. You know, when, when, you know, Well, I, I, got, I got a third of the somebody said, say it, okay. I'm going to tell you how I feel, right? But I got a problem with three and four men at worship Wednesday night. I didn't say pastor had a problem. I said, I got a problem. I got a problem when we have a worship night and there's three men. So I'm going to challenge us is how we live our life out loud, how we lead. Yeah, how we lead. Show this energy at church, this enthusiasm I'm talking about. And then he says, and with every thought that's within you, in other words, your intellect, don't leave your, your mind at home, but bring it to church. It's this intellect that you have to have, this, this my thought life is so much toward God that what can I do to edify the body? But see, this passion and desire and this energy and, and my intellect together edify you. Your passion, your energy, your, your, your intellect edify me. Together, we on fire. Together, we, we, we display that we love our church. And you may say, well, don't take all that. Yes, they do. It takes that and more. It takes that and more. 
There should be some outward signs. Just like there's some fruits of repentance. There's some signs of repentance. There should be some signs in our life that we love God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, in the New Living Translation, it says, And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your, and all your strength. And what that tells me, when Moses was giving this to the people, that the church has been having a problem since the beginning. In Deuteronomy, in, in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy we, just, we just read, Chapter 6, verse 5. And here we read it in Matthew. So Moses said it to Israel, to the people of God, in the beginning. And then here's Jesus saying the same thing thousands of years later. And, and we still have the same, we're still tripping over the same lesson. We're still taking some remedial classes. That shouldn't be. It's, it has to be important if Jesus is still talking about it years later. And I believe that we still have the same issues when we say we love God, but we don't live from that place of passion. We don't live from that place of a bunch of energy. We don't live from that place of I'm bringing my mind to how much I love God. But I want the Holy Spirit to think through my mind. Give me his thoughts. I don't want to be disconnected from your thoughts, but I want your thoughts to be my thoughts. I want your ways to be my ways. That's what I'm talking about, is we have to get over, and we shouldn't have this challenge in how we live for God in church. Second question, how am I connecting to God through my pastor? Oh, Lord. <laughs> See, I, 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 you know, I really don't care. In other words, my reputation, I don't have any. You know, when you come from Generate, you can, you can say when you slept on the floor and all the rest of that stuff, you know, it's all good. But see, what I'm going to share on this, on this subject here, the second part, is uh, I'm good. I'm bold enough to say it. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to show you why this is important. How do I connect to God through my pastor? And, and for anybody that's wondering, uh, pastor doesn't give anybody what to say. I say he don't tell anybody what to say. This is what the Holy Spirit gave me. So this is not no uh, read the notes. Can you, can, you, can you slide this on in there? No, it don't work that way. It don't work that way. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, we're going to read this as uh, out of the Passion Translation. How do I connect to God through my pastors? And why is this important in the attitude of, I say I love my church? So think about that from that perspective. In 1 Timothy 5 and 17, it says, the pastors who lead the church well should be paid well. Yeah, yeah I'm going to pause right there. Yeah. It didn't say they should struggle. They should have a bunch of needs. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about they should be paid well. Yeah. And the second part of the verse says, and they should receive double honor, not just a little honor. Not, you know, pastor can't just be your boy. You can't just be buddies, but there's a certain place you place them in your life. They should receive double honor for faithfully preaching and teaching the revelation of the Word of God. I thought that was a power pack interpretation of that scripture. Double honor. You know, whatever you're doing, take it to another level. You know, if you say you honor, you know, the president or the mayor, you stand up or whoever you may honor, your, your father naturally is, how do you perceive your spiritual father? How do you receive your pastor? And why is that important 
when you say you love your church because you're connected to him because he's the one preaching and teaching the revelation of God to you. Should I not want to connect more to him if I'm getting God's word, his revelation out of his life, uh, out of his mouth to my life? You know, you may say, well, I read the Bible for myself, and yes, that's important. You know, I know God's word. I'm, I'm, I, I know the whole scriptures. I can quote Genesis to Revelation. Sounding brass. It's something about how we properly place the man of God and the woman of God, our pastors, because God has said that they are the ones that's going to preach to you. They're going to teach to you. And I'm not talking about stuff you want to hear, but talking about preach and teach to you revelation. That means something that you need right now. Not something you need on on the by and by, but something you need right now for your life. And that's why it's important to connect. Because if you don't connect with them, then what happens is you can't receive properly. See, how you see them, see, because you decide how you want to honor and if you want to honor. You know, if you, if you don't want to honor this person, I ain't got nothing to do with you, man. If you, want, if you honor that person, you, there's a certain value place that we have when we receive them or we're in their presence. See, my question is, is your honor on E or full? See, I don't, I don't like the lukewarm, I'm kind of there, I'm, the Lord's still working on me. I don't like that. No, fair. I don't like that. I, I don't like the, the Lord's still working on me. He ain't through with me yet. God said double honor. Not just, not, see, if you think you're honoring, it says not double that. Double what you think you're doing. Because there's something that you're going to have when you see them right. See, honoring is for your benefit. That's one thing I realized in life is that, you know, honor is not for that person, but it's for me. Because I get the benefit when I see them in God's place. When I see them how God has told me what to do. He, he, t- he said, you double honor. So that means that I got to make the decision to say, okay, I'm going to honor or I'm not going to honor. I'm going to honor, now I'm going to take up my honor. That's what the scripture says. They should receive double honor so I get to decide how I view them. It's for your benefit. Now we're going to tie this to Jeremiah 1 and 11. I want you to turn there how this honor is important. And I'm going to tell you right now that Pastor Dell and I, uh, I believe uh, properly honoring is a, a major success key that we had in our life. I'm talking about for answered prayers. I'm, talk, I'm talking about from answered prayers I'm talking about for growth and for our prosperity, we can trace it back to how we live a place of honor. I'm going to say it again. A major success key. If you want to emulate somebody, you know, I'm going to let you know. A major success key that I can stand here and tell you that we have uh, implemented all our life. For our, and I, I know our prayers have been answered because God is good, but we can trace it back to just having the spirit of honor in our lives. Honor our pastors. Their success. Their needs. Blessing them. I'm telling you what has been you know, I call it one of the main ingredients. A success key in my life, in our life, is because of how we honor. And here in Jeremiah 1 and 11, reading out of King James Version, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, 
saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? Now, this is important for you to realize that Jeremiah, at the time that the Lord told him this, he was a youth. He was so despondent. And who, who am I to say this? Who, who, I'm just a little, I'm just a youth. I, I realize it's so interesting that the Lord told him, I need you to, I need you to adjust your sight. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this sight that you have and how you perceive some things when I call you into ministry. When God calls him into ministry, the first thing he did was, I need you to see what I see. Because you won't miss it. You won't miss it if you see what I see. Talk about perception here. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what thou seest? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, thou hast seen well. The Lord has showed him this, and he said, okay, I got the answer. I saw that. He didn't miss it. He didn't perceive it differently. He, he didn't see there his pastor differently. He, he recognized who they were in I'm giving you an, an analogy here. I, I see him one way, the way God wants me to see him. I, I understand. Here's Jeremiah saying, the Lord has given me this, and I saw that. God said, you've seen well. He, he didn't say you need some glasses. He didn't say, where's the contacts? He said, you got it right on. So this perception, how we see things, is important. How we decide to see our pastors are important because we love our church. Not the building. The people and the leader. He said, you have seen well. And I love how God does things. He said, not only have you seen well, but this is what I'm going to do because you saw well. Because you properly honor. Because you place them where they're supposed to be in your life. I'm connecting the two scriptures here. Because you have properly seen them where they're supposed to be, this is what God told Jeremiah. Because you have seen well, I will hasten. In other words, I will speedily. In other words, I will suddenly perform it. I'm gonna sudden, I, I want to suddenly perform some things in your life because you see properly. Because you see properly, because you got the right answer, you know, you, 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 I showed you and then you saw what I was showing you. You connected the two. See, when you connect your honor to your purpose, when you connect the honoring to your life, when you connect the honoring to how you're supposed to, to live and, and your success, and you can say, God, it's all on you all day long. That is, that, that is not true. There's, there's some challenge that you have to have when you say, I want to honor. Because we're talking about, we love our church. We, got, we can't love our church without properly honoring the pastors. I've got three amens. Thank you, Elder Gary. <laughs> you, you, see, we may say, well, we lifting up people. Yeah, I'm lifting them up. I, I, I'm lifting them up. Because I see them how God want me to see them. I, I, I see them how God wants me to see them, and you, got to, you have to decide what you're going to do. Yes. Can I connect, can I find my connection in my life to God through my pastors? And I'm showing you here why it is important for you to make that switch, you to turn it up, you to decide that I'm going to move forward in how I honor because my success lies on it. 
it, it, it depends on it. If I don't see right, I am in trouble. If you, got your, if you need glasses and you're driving on the road and you have the glasses at home, let me know what time and what road <laughs> you're going to be on so I can stay at home, let you go to where you're going to go, then I'm going to go where I'm going to go. I don't need you driving with, without your glasses, if you need the glasses, right? Same thing. It's something about clarity of thought. It's something about clarity of vision. It's something about how you perceive someone. When you say that this person is a friend of mine, and that means that they, they're supposed to sharpen you. They're supposed to challenge you. Why? I, I see them as important to me. A friend is born for the, the time I, I'm in adversity. I see this person in my inner circle. I see the value on their life for me. We, we do that all the time. We, how, we, how we see people that, that's with us and how we see those that's not with us. It's okay to have people that's not with you. I love them anyway. We love them anyway because they're God's ch children. But I'm telling you how we perceive those that are around us, our network, our intimate circle, we perceive them and we place value on them. They have the right to challenge us. Sometimes you don't have to ask for it. You know, many times I don't ask for certain things and Elder Gary tells me something or Pastor Val or, or Elder Patio or my brother DC that, that share some things. Why? I, I, I honor them and who they are in my life. I, I, I want them to say, hey, guess what? You're about to go off the road. Hey, you're about to fall off the ditch. Hey, you're about to cause a major accident. Hey, this is going to cause you to go step back a couple of times. You're going to have to go around that mountain again. I, I want them, without restraint, please tell me. I don't want life teaching me. I don't want to touch the stove. They say, oh, it, it was hot. Please tell me not to touch the stove. I, I, want, I want them, I'm looking for them to help me. And see, that's how we have to have our perception about our leaders. And I believe that when you see right, your life will accelerate. It will accelerate because Jesus, God told him, I'm sorry, in this passion, in this, in this, uh, tr in this uh, translation here, that I will hasten to perform. That means I'm gonna respond so quickly to you because you see right. Yes. Now, third question and the final question. How am I connecting to God through the vision? How am I connecting to God through the church's vision? And in Habakkuk 2 and 2, Reading this out of the New Living Translation, Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer so plainly on the table so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. See, we're not talking about if there's a vision, do we have to have a vision, why there's a vision, what is the vision, and that is important all day long. But we're not talking about that right here. We're not talking, we're talking we, we, I'm trying to locate you and I want you to locate yourself. As I said, how am I or how are you connecting to God through the vision? So there is a vision. There is a vision. But what is your role in the vision? The answer is found right here. I'm going to read it again. Then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. You may say, what is the answer to that question? The answer is you are a runner. Yes. I am a runner of the vision. Yes. I'm, so, I'm such a runner that I have to be so connected to the vision that it says that I properly communicate to others. 
You see, remember I told you about being connected is the difference between being connected and being attached. You can't say that you're connected and you don't know the vision. How can I communicate uh, the vision because I'm running by, how can I communicate the vision if I don't have my passion there? I'm, I'm running this race. I'm running the, the property to tell others. I'm so excited about this thing that God is doing at my church. I'm so excited. I'm telling the vision to everybody because I'm so passionate about it. As we saw in Matthew, I have such energy of myself. My mind is so connected to the church that I am running with the vision. I'm running with it. I'm running to the place to where I, I'm so passionate and excited and enthusiastic about the vision that I'm properly telling other people. I, I didn't tell them half the vision. I, I didn't tell them a part of it, but I'm, correct, I'm correctly telling them the vision. I am a runner. You are a runner. You are, you are a runner to tell others about this. In other words, you're, you're a fire starter. You're someone that's so passionate about the ministry that I'm, I'm communicating to somebody else. I'm so passionate about the, the ministry that I'm telling everybody where I go. I'm running to tell them, guess what? Come and see what's happening here. You know, I, come, come, you know, Bible says, you know, compel those that are lost. You know, in other words, that word compel really means convince. Be so much about the things of God, about that vision and that ministry. I'm compelling those. Guess what? This, I'm running to tell you, Nikisha, guess what? This is so important. I, I, I need you to get this. I'm running to tell you. It's so urgent that I tell you this message. I want you to hear it. That's the attitude that we have to have. That I'm running to tell you. Do you want God to run towards you with an answer? Yes, we do. But think about how urgent that is when somebody's knocking on your door to say, I got to tell you, guess what? Your house is on fire. I want them, I want them, to, I want them to knock real out. I want them to be so urgently, you know, the fire department is coming. They, uh, they, they're so urgently responding to the emergency. Same thing. That same type of passion, drive, commitment that they have to, to get to that address, because guess what? There's people there. I, 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 we don't want nothing to happen to them. We don't want nothing to happen to the property. They, they're so urgently, they, they're weaving through the roads to get to that destination. And that's the same thing that we must have when we say that we're a runner of the vision. I'm so excited about it. I love my church that I'm running to tell somebody else about my ministry. I'm so excited about the things of God and what's happening there and how I'm growing because I'm so connected. Man, my life has been changed so much. I'm telling somebody else, you got to come see this, man. This is, this is awesome. My, my life has is, is changed. My life is different. My, my marriage is different. My, my future is different. My purpose is different. Why? Because I'm being so impacted at the ministry. I, I want to tell you so badly, I want to compel you so badly that it's burning on everything on the inside of me. That's the perspective. If we're not there, then we get there. You may say, well, I've been a walker of the vision or I've just been attending. I, I, I'm not really running with the vision. That's okay. We can run now. You can see things differently. You can see things differently. So we answered those three questions. How do I connect or how am I connected to God through my church? I come there with passion. I come with this drive. I come with this energy. I come with this, with my mind being connected. Because, you know, you can see people that's disconnected, right? You know, in other words, they, they, in their, their mind is somewhere else. 
So how am I connecting to God through my church? And we talked about how do we connect to God through our pastors, and that's through honor. That's through how we perceive them. Because God is trying to get you revelation, when he says here, the preaching and the teaching, because of the preaching and the teaching of the man of God, of the word of God to your life, I need to properly connect. I need to properly connect so that way my life can accelerate. And we saw how in Jeremiah, how he properly saw a connection. God showed him something and he interpreted what he saw exactly what God said, I, you have seen well. You have perceived this so well, I will now hasten to perform my word. I'm gonna now hasten to perform the thing that I showed you. Now, when you look at Jeremiah 1 and 18, you know, God said to Jeremiah, yeah, you're a young person. He said, but because you seen right and you perceive right, and because you're gonna, you're gonna, you, 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 I'm gonna hasten to perform. I love chapter, uh, verse 18 where it says, I'm gonna make you, or, or I have made you a fortified city made of iron. A fortified city, you cannot go take it over with. Enemy may come in, but it can't get there. Disappointments may come in, but it, it can't get in. Persecutions may come, but it can't, it can't, it can't get to me because I'm so fortified in what I have seen. I'm so fortified that God said that you, you're like iron. You're so strong, you're so solid, you're so protected. And I believe that that's how our honor does. It protects us. It honors, it, 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 it puts a hedge of protection around about us. Because the enemy wants to come in and, and sift us as wheat. But we have to have that, that perception to say, Lord, I love you so much. I, I, I'm, I see my man of God so much, how he's supposed to be in my life. I'm so solid in it. No matter what may happen, I'm fortified in you. I'm protected because I properly see. You've seen well. And because you've seen well, and now you're gonna do what I tell you to do, you are now a fortified city. It was progression. He saw right, he did what God told him to do, and then he said, don't worry. Don't worry about the people. Don't worry about the enemy. Don't worry about nobody else that's not honoring you honor. Don't worry about nobody else how they do, you do. It's not a competition. But it's not where, oh, this person is not honoring, so let me get out of honor. No, I'm judging myself. And as I said earlier, and I'm saying it again, a major success key that my wife and I have had in our life is properly honoring. I cannot emphasize enough the value of honoring leadership. I can't, I can't emphasize it enough. When you come from where I came from, when you've been hungry, when, you, when you're fatherless, when, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're sleeping on the floors, when you, when you have the, 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 the box fan in the window and you think the AC is on, when you have a game and your dad don't show up. When you have children and he's not at the hospital, it's honor. Honor has got me here. Honor has the home that we live in. The calling of God. The favor of God. It's nothing about me. But the honor has produced a lifestyle. But God. But God. <laughs> but God. But you can take me from Jenneret. 
where you can take me from where I was in my mind, my, my frustration and my anger, my, my, the spirit of offense, where you can rescue me out of that, where you can place this love when there shouldn't be love. When you, when you place this love in your life, oh my God. I never imagined living like I live. I'm just testifying. will take you places that you can only dream of. It's gonna unlock some doors. My children are in private school. I've been married for almost 21 years. I didn't see a marriage in my life. I was angry. I was mad at God. Why I have to be in this situation? I have no idea what this, this is about. This is not, oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, we say that he, he didn't have to, but he did, but... Have you ever been so hurt? Hallelujah. There's something about honor, what honor does for you. It's for your benefit. Oh my God. I just want to encourage you to see your leaders right. I don't know. I can't, un I can't overemphasize that part. God loves us so much that he placed a man and a woman of God in our life. And when we say we love our church, it is something about how we can honor, what we can do to better their life, connecting properly, connecting properly. We want to accelerate our life. If you only know my story. I haven't told you all my business yet. <laughs> if you only know. When you, when, you, when you go to school without a bath, because there's no water, but God. <laughs> Something simple like that, can you? You, you take a bath every day, but there's no bath because there's no water. I, I remember being told, oh, mate, you, you must stay. Oh, oh I, I, I know. <laughs> you, you must stay. You, you, yeah, I, 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 amen, I, I need a bath. Wanted one, couldn't get one. 
is only God. It's only God. Living out loud for Him. Amen. I hope you received something on that. I know I have never shared some of those things before, and, uh, but God is just such an awesome God, amen. You may find yourself that you're not connected to God at all. That, that was the first thing that I mentioned about being connected to God through your church. I wanna create this space. That is key number one. He said that that is the, the first and the supreme command that you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, all your energy, all your passion. You, you may not be living for Him like that. You may have walked away and, or you may have not even become a child of God, but this moment that we have right now, if that's you, if you wanna rededicate your life or give your life to Christ for the, the first time so you can connect properly to God, this is the time. This is the moment. This is the hour. Your life will accelerate when you properly place God where He's supposed to be. Amen. You will accelerate. For those who said, well, I, I, I'm saved, but I'm not ashamed to say I, I haven't uh, properly honored. I'm going to take this moment, I, I hope it's okay with you, to pray with us, to say I haven't honored the way I'm supposed to honor and not being embarrassed about it and say I was there. I, I had to make some adjustments in my life and say I, I haven't honored the way I'm supposed to. If that's you, I will ask you to stand right where you are. You may say, "Who? nobody judging you. Don't, nobody judging you. Nobody judging you. Nobody has a hell or heaven to put you in. But God wants to increase the honor on this morning. I, I know there's others. God wants to do something. He wants to usher in a whole new spirit where we honor our pastors because they're the ones preaching and teaching the revelation of God's word for our life. I'm gonna give a couple more seconds. Don't be too afraid to stand. I had to make that same stand and make the adjustment. I will ask that you take the time to come to the altar. Yeah, come on, come on, come to the altar. You know, that's called revelation and that's importation. I live a life of honor. I live a life of honor. I wanna import some things on this morning. I know it's Communion Sunday, so Pastor Mary, I apologize. Uh, for taking some time, but I know God wants to do some things on this morning. I want you to go ahead and connect with the person next to you. Connect with them. Lord, right now, thank you for my brothers and my sisters that's made this journey to not say that they're so embarrassed that their pride may have kept them in their seat and when it comes with honoring correctly. So God, I thank you for the spirit of honor that operates in my life, being on their life. I thank you for importing into them the proper vision, how they should see, how they should live, what they should do, how they should place the man and the woman of God in proper place in their life. So God, I thank you, God, even now for everything that's been locked because of dishonor or not having a proper honor, Lord, I thank you that you're going to rectify some things. You're going to correct some things. And now that they see correctly, 
You're going to hasten speedily to perform every desire. Lord, I thank you that after they got this honor right, after they've got their honor and their perspective right, Lord, I thank you that those things that may have been lingering on, a prayer, a promotion, increase that may have been locked in their life, I thank you for unlocking those things on the inside of them because they have made the decision on the day. I will be a person that honors right. So God, I thank you for all that you're doing in their life. Thank you for a tangible manifestation in their mind, in their life, on their job, in their spirit, the peace that's going to be there. So God, I thank you that the weights are off, the scales are removed, and I thank you, God, even now for proper vision. I thank you, God, for invading them with proper vision to sustain this level of honor. So God, I glorify you. I magnify you. And I thank you, God, even now for your grace, because grace is honor. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You can return to your seat. I know God's going to do some things in your life. I know it. And I can't wait to hear the testimony from how your honor has increased. The moment, the moment that we have left, it is Communion Sunday. And on your seat, there should be a communion. I'm going to read two scriptures. Thank you. It's Communion Sunday. I love the fact that they have examined themselves to say, where, where am I falling short? And the same thing we must do in our lives, examine ourselves. In the first Corinthians 11, 24, it says, and this is Jesus, when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, let us eat together. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink, in remembrance of me, let us drink together. You know, communion is something that's so sacred to the body. And so we're so thankful for you being here on this communion Sunday. You go ahead and stand while we dismiss service. We're connected because we're about to accelerate. We're connected because we are accelerating. Amen. God, I thank you even now for this time that we had in your presence, oh Lord. I thank you that the word of God has fallen, we know it's fallen on great ground. Lord, we thank you, God, that as we meditate on these things this week, that was heard on today. Thank you, God, that you reveal to those the adjustments that they need to make concerning their relationship with you, their relationship with the pastor, and their relationship with the vision. So God, I thank you even now for traveling grace as we depart this place. Thank you, God, even now that your glory goes before us, oh God, is also before us, and it's our real, real guard, oh God. So I thank you for your protection. I thank you, God, that we're blessed everywhere to be a blessing. Bless us on our job, bless us at our homes, bless us in our communities, oh God. So God, we honor you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed rest of your Sunday.